CPI also help us make better financial decisions or saving decisions. Let's look at one example. You worked on a summer job, which pays you a thousand dollars. You are about using the thousand dollar to buy an iPhone. However, you can either buy the iPhone now or you can buy it later. If you buy an iPhone now, one iPhone costs $1,000. So you can afford one iPhone. If you decide to buy the iPhone later, you can save your money in a US saving account. And imagine the interest in the saving account with 50%. After one year of time, how much do you get back from your saving account? Well, you get back your principal, which is $1,000, plus you are earning 50% interest on your saving. So in total, you get back $1,500. It seems that saving is a good choice because in dollar units, your $1,000 turns into $1,500 uh, in one year of time. So saving seems to be the right choice to make. And 50% of interest seem to be a high investment return. However, this argument or reasoning is only valid if the price of iPhone remain fixed over time. If, of, if over the course of one year, price of iPhone increased from $1,000 to $2,000 at the end of the year, then with $1,500 of saving, you can only buy three quarters of an iPhone, which is less than the iPhone you can purchase if you spend your money right away, in which case you can buy one iPhone. So basically, in this example, there is a difference between real interest and the nominal interest. We typically use letter R to denote real interest. or the actual return our saving. And we use letter I to denote nominal interest. So real interest is our actual return, or return measured in terms of iPhones. Nominal interest is our return in terms of dollar units. So in our example, the nominal interest on the saving account is 50%. Because in terms of dollar units, our saving is going to grow from $1,000 to $1,500 as over the course of one year. However, the real return on our saving is negative. Because the real return is equal to the nominal return 50%, subtract how much price level has gone up over time. So in this example, saving the money all in the bank, our saving is going to grow by 50% over the course of one year. However, during the same period, price of iPhone increased from $1,000 to $2,000 or there is 100% increase in the price level. Subtracting the increase in price level from the nominal interest give us a measure of what is happens to our purchasing power over time, or the real return over time, which is negative 50%. Meaning that if we postpone our purchasing decision, our affordability for iPhone actually drops instead of rise. Because if we buy the iPhone now, we spend $1,000 on 
on a thousand dollar iPhone, we can purchase one iPhone. If we postpone our purchasing decision, our money grows to fifteen hundred dollar in the saving account, while the price of iPhone grows to two thousand dollar in the market supermarket or Best Buy, and we can only afford point seven five iPhone at the end of the year. Therefore, although we're getting fifty percent return nominal return in our bank account, it's not enough to compensate for the one hundred percent rise in the price of iPhone. As a result, at the end of the year, our purchasing power actually declined by fifty percent. In this example, this fifty percent or the interest on our saving account is known as the nominal interest I. This one hundred percent or how much price of iPhone has gone up is known as the inflation rate pi. And this. The difference between the nominal and the inflation rate is known as the real interest, which measures what happens to our purchasing power. And the important relationship to remember here is real interest, or what happens to our purchasing power. Is equal to the difference between nominal interest which is how much interest the bank account is offering us subtract the inflation rate and the typical measure of inflation rate is the change in CPI over time